Blackberries have a long history of being grown commercially here in Oklahoma. In fact, they're one of the most prolific berry crops you can grow in your own backyard, and they sure are easy. They love our Oklahoma heat. And we have five varieties of the erect thorny kind of blackberries here in our garden. We have Rossboro, Shawnee, Brazos, Bryson, and our favorite right here is Womack. We had an informal taste test out here with the camera crew yesterday morning, and this one was very well picked over because it had the sweetest berries. Now when you're picking blackberries, the early pickings will give you the largest fruit. That's what we call the berries that came from the king blossom. And then the later ones will be a little bit smaller, but possibly potentially sweeter because they're later season berries. When you're picking blackberries, if you want the very sweetest ones for home garden use, you want to wait when they go from a shiny black with tinges of red to a complete all over dull black. Those are the ones that are the very sweetest if you can wait that long. Now there aren't very many pests that bother blackberries. However, there is one that I need to show you that is more of a nuisance pest than anything else. So let's take a look at that. If your blackberries are showing crimped foliage such as this, chances are you've been visited by the blackberry psyllid. Now the psyllid is a very tiny insect that feed, and feeds the same way that aphids do. It sucks out plant foliage and the result is curly crimped leaves like these. Wherever there are wild blackberries around, if you're growing cultivated blackberries, you'll always have a little damage like this. It's not anything serious. The damage is already done so we don't recommend spraying for it and it's more of a nuisance pest than anything else. In fact, if it hits the top part of foliage, it's going to be cut away anyway because the next step in caring for blackberries is to do some summer pruning on them. Now, blackberries have two basic kinds of growth. They have flowering canes and they have what we call prima canes or new canes that come up every year that will bear fruit next year. If you want those new canes to bear abundant fruit and not fall over in the row, you need to prune them right now. What I recommend is that you prune back to a leaf axle. And this will cause them to branch out. Now one other pruning tasks that you do in the summertime with blackberries is after the fruiting canes have borne their fruit, after you're through with harvest, you need to go in and cut those away all the way to the ground because they are going to die back anyway and that'll give you more room for your new canes to grow to have good production for next year. Also it's easier to tell this time of year which cane is which than if you wait till the winter time to do your pruning. Well if the thorns are a problem to you, make sure you wear heavy gloves. And if you really don't like thorns on blackberries, we have one to show you that is completely genetically thornless. You can grow it, eat blackberries, and be pain free. Let's go take a look at that. Now most thornless blackberries need to be grown on a trellis because they have what we call a semi-trailing growth habit. They won't stand upright on their own even if you prune them. Now there is a new variety of thornless blackberry coming out next year. It's a release from University of Arkansas that is completely erect. It will not need a trellis and that variety is called Navajo. So that's one you might want to watch for next year. Now the thornless blackberries are a little later bearing than our regular cultivated erect blackberries. But the weight is worth it, especially if you don't like thorns. Over here is the thorny beast. This is the tayberry. And a tayberry was released from Scotland and it's a cross between a raspberry and a blackberry. And most blackberries, when you pick them, still have a, a solid center in them. The opposite of that is most raspberries, when you pick them, have a hollow core. And you can tell this is a cross between the two. This one's ripe. It looks like a raspberry, but the interior clings like a blackberry. It has an excellent raspberry flavor. The only problem we found with tayberries is that in Oklahoma, the canes that overwinter to produce fruit the next year are not winter hardy, so we have to lay them down and mulch them over to get fruit. Well, let's go take a look at some more raspberry varieties. Now this is a black raspberry, it's Bristol variety. And typical of all raspberries, it has a hollow center to it. The black raspberries 
have a little milder raspberry flavor than red raspberries, and they are more seedy, but they do make great jam. And their growth habit is great. This is a nice low shrub. We did prune it last year so it would branch out, but it's great for your landscape because it does stay in bounds very nicely. Let's look at the raspberry that most of you are familiar with, the red raspberry. Now, red raspberries have larger fruit than black raspberries, but they do need a bit of support. Their canes grow tall enough that next to a trellis, they'll need some tying up to hold them erect. Now, growing raspberries in general, whether they're black raspberries or red raspberries, you must remember that they need plenty of moisture and cool soils, so remember to mulch them. Also, if, they're, if you're growing them in a hot, dry, windy area, put up some kind of windbreak so they'll make it through our Oklahoma summers.